Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our virtual watch party of our docu series, Native Lifeways on the Greenways, in partnership with Great Rivers Greenway. Thank you for every for attending on your lunchtime. We are very excited to bring you this event. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on what this series has been. Uh, we focused this partnership and hoping to do an actual in-person walking tour on the greenways. Unfortunately, given uh, the times of precautions and safety with the pandemic, we've decided to bring you a series virtually. And we were able to shoot at three different locations on the greenways and also incorporate our presentations that we've done uh, surrounding the lifeways and the greenways with the ancestral lands of Native people. So we bring you our speakers, Norman Akers of the Osage Nation, who is a cultural advisor, and also Ed Spivak from the Missouri Zoo. And now I'd like to introduce Elizabeth Simons, who is going to share the video for us. Also, I just wanted to share that if you have any questions or comments, we'd love for you to share them in the Q&A or on the panel, and we can answer them as we watch the party. Also, we're going to have a brief uh, Q&A at the end where we'll uh, mention some comments, answer any other questions that there might be, and feel free to ask them throughout the presentation. Great, thanks, Melody. So as Melody mentioned, there are three different Greenway locations that we'll be visiting through these videos. There are three different episodes. Each Greenway location has its own episode. So we'll play these back to back now. Uh, All together, it'll be a little over 20 minutes. And then after that, we'll have time for questions and answers. So with that, we'll get the video started. We acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands of the Osage people who were removed unjustly. And because of that removal, we now are the beneficiaries of this land. We acknowledge them as we live, work, and study here in Missouri. spaces that connect people and places. Greenways in the St. Louis region are located on land stewarded by Native American people throughout generations. The sacred relationship between Native American people and ancestral land where the greenways are located continues today. Some of the unique features at this location along the Mississippi Greenway in Cliff Cave County Park are the Mississippi River, the cave, and the native woodlands. Native people who were living in Missouri have been here since time immemorial. Starting before pre-colonization, the Cahokian period, which is around here in St. Louis and also in Illinois, had the largest city north of Mexico. And this land also was then inhabited by several other nations who have migrated and lived across the land. In the 19th century, which is known as the Coro Discovery, the Louisiana Purchase happened here. This led to the removal of Native people living here and across the land. One of those tribal nations are the Osage people who currently live in Oklahoma. You know, the Osage people, you know, um, 
our, our name is called Neoklonska, which means children of the middle waters. Um, you know, that's one of the names that we use for, for ourselves. Um, the term Osage, you know, which has kind of an interesting history because when the French encountered the Osage, uh, we also call ourselves Wajaji. And they wrote it down. And when they wrote it down, the English came along and looked at that spelling and they started pronouncing it Osage. But, but we really are called the Wajaji people. The Osage have, have been in Missouri for, for you know, centuries. Um, um, there's even, you know, a belief that we were connected to, to the mound builder culture. And, and so, so, you know, we've been in, in that region long enough that we said we really call it home. So, you know, our history really is, is a set of very much a part and, and connected to, to the Missouri area. We stand here in front of a cliff cave. This cave is sacred to the Osage people. It's close enough to the river to fish. It also is far enough from the river so it won't get flooded here at all. Rivers were very much a part of our, our life ways and our survival. I mean, essentially water is necessary for survival. Those areas where we live, um, you know, we, we hunted, you know, and, and fished. I mean, hunted and, and farmed for survival. We uh, we collected plants like like persimmons and pawpaws, uh, and also yonkin, which is water lily root, and which they made a soup out of. You know, those were you know sort of important food sources you know for us. Native American people often have a deep understanding of the land and the plants that grow there. Part of the indigenous ways of knowing is knowing what parts of plants to prepare, when to prepare them, how to prepare them. These plants have relationships with humans, but in addition to being used as gifts for food and medicine, they also have relationships with the native pollinators and other wildlife around them. For about 800 years, Native American people have been stewarding these lands in the St. Louis region. Knowing how to use these plants comes from an ongoing relationship that has been developed over many, many years throughout many, many generations. The native woodlands that are now home to the Mississippi Greenway in Cliff Cave County Park once provided all of the resources needed to survive and thrive to the Native American people who lived in this area. Here are a few examples of the native plants you can see along the greenways and some of the benefits they provide. This is the hackberry tree. We could tell because of the warty knobs and ridges on its bark. And its sweet fruit is a food for squirrels, birds, and raccoons. This tree here with the heart-shaped leaves is a red bud. So as an understory tree, it provides shelter for mammals, birds, This tree here with the heart-shaped leaves is a red bud. So as an understory tree, it provides shelter for mammals, birds, and in the springtime, it has bright pink flowers that are an important nectar source for bees. It also has seeds that birds eat. This is a persimmon tree, and we can tell by the blocky bark. So the fruits, buds, leaves are all eaten by deer, possum, raccoon, squirrel, turkey, fox, coyote, and the persimmon tree will actually grow in disturbed landscapes, so it plays a very important role in helping to re-establish mature ecosystems. The sassafras tree actually has three different leaf shapes on the same tree. So there's the round leaf shape, the leaf shape that looks like a mitten, and the leaf shape that has three different lobes. On this tree, the birds like to eat the fruit and the leaves and twigs are eaten by rabbits, woodchucks, deer, and bears. And leaves are also a primary food source for many moths and butterflies. So pawpaw trees grow in colonies. If you see one, look around, you'll probably see others nearby. 
squirrels, possum, ra raccoon all like to eat the fruit. And the zebra swallowtail butterfly cannot live on any other plant. The caterpillars develop on the leaves, and so that's where the females lay the eggs. We were removed from Missouri in 1810. So, so, and I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, you know, is, is that, um, that our life ways have really changed with that, that forced removal. Um, a lot of the plants that were indigenous to the areas, you know, changed. The dense tangle of woodlands that you see in many places today are very different than they were pre-contact. So today, invasive species are often densely packed in the understory. And so Great Rivers Greenway and partners are clearing the invasive species out of the understory so that the canopy can be opened up and the native plants get the sunlight and rain that they need. Here in Missouri, we have about 80,000 Native American people living, and we also have certain organizations like the Alliance for Native Programs and Initiatives and the Catherine and Buddha Center as resources for people living in Missouri who want to learn about Native history. We acknowledge that we live here on the lands of the Osage people who were removed unjustly, and we as community members are the beneficiaries of that removal. We honor them as we live, work, and study here in Missouri. spaces that connect people and places. Greenways in the St. Louis region are located on land stewarded by Native American people throughout generations. Many of the greenways trace the waterways that form the foundation of our communities here in the St. Louis region. Our waterways connect us all and our actions impact the water quality in our own communities and downstream. The waterways here in Missouri are very sacred to several tribes who've lived here. We acknowledge that a lot of the ways we live with the land are very sacred to the Native people. Not only do we live from the water, we live with the water. Over the years, people have gathered together on the banks of these creeks to catch fish, eat together, and share stories. Deer Creek begins in Creve Corps, and Shady Creek begins in Glendale, and the two creeks come together here in Lorraine Davis Park, where they flow on to the River De Pere, into the Mississippi River, and out to the Gulf of Mexico. Much like the greenways that trace the waterways here in the St. Louis region, many Native American people also have a connection to these creeks, streams, and rivers, with the understanding that life thrives along waterways. For ancestral Native people, gathering along the river provided not only opportunities for community, but also for ceremonial purposes. It's important to keep the waterways healthy in terms of not polluting the environment and ensuring that these spaces are healthy for future generations. Deer Creek Watershed is home to nearly 100,000 people and a variety of animals, such as deer, coyote, fox, mink, raccoon, great blue heron, kingfisher, duck, turtles, fish, frogs, macroinvertebrates, and the plants that support us all.
indigenous wisdom is knowing what parts of the plants to prepare, when to prepare them, and how to prepare them to be able to use them for medicine and food. And in addition to having relationships with humans, these plants also have relationships with wildlife and native pollinators all around them. Here are a few examples of the native plants you can see along the greenways and some of the benefits they provide. The button bush always grows near water. Its fragrant flowers are a favorite nectar source for honeybees, and some birds build their nests in this shrub. This is the blue flag iris. It is one of four native iris flowers here in Missouri. The large blue purple flowers bloomed earlier in the spring, and bumblebees collect nectar from these flowers while cross-pollinating them in the process. Because this flower grows in wetlands, it plays an important role in cleaning the water and stabilizing the soil. This is the slender mountain mint, which actually smells like mint. Bees, beetles, butterflies, flies, wasps, and skippers are all attracted to this flower. This is the cucumber magnolia tree. The cucumber magnolia and the umbrella magnolia are the only native magnolia trees here in Missouri. The name comes from the young fruit, which is shaped like a cucumber. The seeds are eaten by birds and small mammals. The Ozark witch hazel is named for people known as water witches in the Ozarks who use the fork branches of this shrub to find the best places to dig water wells. Deer eat the twigs and leaves of this shrub. Raccoons, squirrels, mice, and as many as 45 species of songbirds eat the fruit of this elderberry. Deer eat the leaves and twigs. Bees, beetles, butterflies, flies, and moths collect the pollen of the elderberry. The confluence of these two creeks supports an entire community of plants, animals, and people. All of the plants shown in the video can be used for medicine and or food when prepared properly. Native plants change throughout the course of the year. And throughout generations, Native American people have grown to understand how the seasons impact the plants and when best to collect the plants in order to be able to safely use them. The sacred relationship between Native American people and the ancestral land where the greenways are located continues today. We acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands of the Osage people where the original borderless lands also were inhabited by the Illini, Iowa, Missouri, Oto, Quapaw, Second Fox, Sioux, and Kansas people. We honor them as we live, work, and play on these lands in Missouri. outdoor spaces that connect people and places. Greenways in the St. Louis region are located on land stewarded by Native American people throughout generations. One of the unique features here along the Darden Greenway is the restored prairie. Recently a sod farm, it's now a 34 acre prairie. We also have the natural floodplain for Darden Creek. Together these provide valuable resources for pollinators, birds, and other native wildlife. The prairies of North America are large, open grasslands that once covered over 200 million acres, including about half of Missouri. Fewer than 1% of these prairies remain today, but you can see restored prairies in several areas along the greenways. The 
roots of the prairie plants go deep into the ground to help store stormwater, store carbon, and keep soil in place. Native plants cycle nutrients back into the soil and provide the fundamental basis for life on Earth. They provide food and shelter for native organisms throughout the food chain. Fire is a natural part of life for native ecosystems here in the Midwest. These habitats depend on fire to eliminate invasive plants and restore nutrients into the soil. Low intensity fires like prescribed burns help to release the nutrients in plant materials so that the nutrients are more available in the soil for these growing native plants. The prairie plants are protected from these fires because their plant buds grow at or beneath ground level. Here at Garden Greenway at Bluebird Meadow, we are surrounded by a lot of trees and vegetation and wildlife. The native people who inhabited these lands lived with the pollinators. And the bee population was also encouraged and lived with the people as they moved across the lands. This symbiotic relationship was very important and significant as the bees pollinated the various foods that they cultivated on the lands. Native plants have relationships with other native pollinators and wildlife. They also have relationships with humans. Part of the indigenous way of knowing is knowing what part of the plants to prepare, how to prepare them, when to prepare them to receive the gifts of their medicine and food. Bees, butterflies, and other insects are drawn to the gray-headed coneflower. They eat the nectar in exchange for their cross-pollination services. All kinds of herbivores, from caterpillars to woodchucks, eat the leaves. The rattlesnake master is a signature plant of the tall grass prairie. Its name comes from the idea that it can help reduce the effects of snake venom. Bees, beetles, butterflies, flies, and wasps are all drawn to this flower for its nectar. Blazing stars are an important part of the complex community of plants here in the tall grass prairie. Many types of insects visit the flowers, birds eat the seeds, herbivores eat the thick underground stems. Wild bergamot gets its name from its scent, which is similar to that of the bergamot orange grown in Italy. Bees, butterflies, wasps, and moths all visit this flower to drink its nectar. There are 23 native species of goldenrod here in Missouri. Goldenrod blooms at the same time as some of the wind-pollinated ragweeds, pigweeds, so it often gets blamed for allergies. But if you take a closer look, goldenrod is not to blame. Goldenrod is pollinated by insects carrying the pollen rather than the wind blowing it through the air as some of the other plants are pollinated. Goldenrods typically bloom late in the growing season, so they're a critical nectar source for beetles, bees, butterflies, flies, wasps, and other insects. For many of these bugs, this is their last food before the freezing weather puts a stop to their activity. The plants featured in these videos are used by Native American people for medicine and food. Part of the indigenous ways of knowing includes knowing when to prepare these plants, how to prepare them, what parts of the plants to use, because many of these plants also do have toxic properties. Throughout the generations, Native American people have handed down the teachings of when to harvest plants, what parts to use, how best to prepare them to receive their gifts of medicine and food because when prepared incorrectly or using the wrong parts or at the wrong time, these plants can be quite dangerous. The sacred relationship between Native American people and the ancestral land where the greenways are located continues today. Great, so as you saw in the videos, these are all various places on greenways that are open to everyone to go visit and enjoy. Uh, there's over 128 miles of greenways throughout St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and St. Charles County um, that are open to all. Yes, 
I loved that. That was so great to see. And all the footage of the area all the way down to the bees and our wonderful speakers and their wealth of knowledge we had was so great to have. Uh, we did have, excuse me, we had one question that came through um, from Ben on Zoom and he asked, how do you spell the real name of the Osage? Um, I hate to even try here. Uh, so we referred him to the Osage Nation website. It's in our chat and I'll leave that on Facebook as well. Uh, that has not a background in history and how the word is said, as well as Osage words. Um, and also it has the writing that Osage people have for their words, which is very cool to see. So I encourage you to check out that website for more information. Thanks for that question, that was great. Um, I see another question about, uh, from Lori, I saw this was being recorded, will it be available for others to watch? Lori, yes, it will be. We have it on Facebook Live on the Missouri Humanities Facebook page. Um, I think it will also be available on Great Rivers web page as well and our YouTube channel. So I would say stay tuned. If not, you can view the recording on Missouri Humanities uh, page uh, as soon as this is completed. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we also have a comment from Todd. Great videos and thank you for putting these great resources together. Thanks so much, Todd. I encourage you to uh, stay tuned to our events on uh, MissouriHumanities.com or dot, dot org, excuse me. I'm going to put that in here right now and as well as the web page for Great Rivers Greenways. Greenway. <laughs> I'll never get that right, <laughs> um, but I will know. I, and thank you so much for joining us. We loved it as well. And I highly encourage you to see and check out these spots of the Greenway. And uh, now you know a little bit more about these areas and the people's ancestral lands who lived here and how uh, they connected to the land. Um, you have any uh, comments on that so far, Elizabeth? No, I just um, saw another question about when was the prescribed burn um, at the Barrett Haven area along Darden Greenway. So that took place, I forget exactly which, um, actually, you know what, it was in February of this year. So um, shortly before the start of the pandemic, February. Um, and Melody, I know you've got a lot of other upcoming programs in the Native American Heritage Program at Missouri Humanities Council. I've really enjoyed learning from a lot of um, the speakers and people sharing their knowledge and wisdom um, this year. Are there any others coming up uh, in the next few weeks? Yes, we actually have another webinar next week uh, on uh, Native American curriculum in schools and what that looks like for the future in terms of Native people telling their stories uh, for school books and also in children's books. Uh, that's going to be led by Deb Taffa, who is a person who reviews books, and we're very excited to hear her thoughts and in the midst of the pandemic where that's headed for school curriculum. Um, this is also great for any teachers or educators out there to learn more about how they can even prepare for November, which is Native American Heritage Month. So thanks for that. And we also have um, an event coming up in November, which is the Native Historian Symposium. So for all of our events, I would uh, highly recommend you uh, register for our newsletter or visit, visit our website, which I've left in our comments at mohumanities.org. And also, if you're interested in attending our gala, it is coming up in October. Uh, it's an event where we uh, honor and uh, I guess uphold people who have been a part of the humanities and we recognize people who've done great work in our community to connect us to people and places in Missouri. Wonderful. There's a few more questions coming in. One is, uh, where is the Osage Nation headquartered? Um, do you want to answer that one, Melody? And then I'll answer the question about volunteering on the Greenways. 
Sure. Uh, ancestrally, the Osage Nation ranges across a wide span of states. I think it's uh, 12 to 13 states, and I can't uh, remember exactly right now, but it's a huge span. I just want to say that first. Uh, the Osage people were re relocated to lands in Oklahoma, and I believe they are, uh, it's around the Tulsa area in Pahuska, Oklahoma, is where their land, their uh, reservation headquarters are located. And again, I left that website in our chat um, if you're interested in finding out more. Uh, so I see another question um, for you, Elizabeth. Is there a website to view all the greenways to plan to visit them? Absolutely. So the Great Rivers Greenway website is greatriversgreenway.org, and I'll put it in the chat as well. On that website, there's a search feature, so you can find out about all the different greenways and the different types of activities and things you can um, check out while you're there. And you can search by you know type of area, where in the region it's located to find the greenways that match what you're looking for. There's also a question about volunteering. So on the Great Rivers Greenway website as well, if you click on events, um, you'll see volunteer opportunities listed there. We don't have a whole lot of them uh, at this time because oftentimes volunteering means gathering together large groups of people, whether it's to clean up trash out of um, you know, the, the waterways and lands along the greenways or removing invasive species or planting native plants. Um, there are some and, you know, we're adapting as well, whether that means, um, you know, only volunteering with members of your household or spreading out a volunteer event over several days instead of, you know, just a few hours, but that's listed there. I know um, towards the end of October, there's um, a, a large scale regional um, trash pickup along the greenway. So that information will be on our website as well, which is greatriversgreenway.org. Thank you for putting it in the chat, Melody. Yes, of course. Uh, so we have time for a few more comments and questions. I have a comment um, from Millie. She said, this is fabulous, loved it. Glad it will be available later. And she says, my aunt, a hiker who was recovering from a broken hip, hip will love it as much as I did. Thanks again. And I'm so glad you, um, enjoyed it Millie and I'm, I hope that your aunt a hiker does too and this is our hopes uh, to reach everyone who um, may not be able to get outside due to the pandemic and you can view the greenways in a very unique way we actually were able to use a um, what is the word for it the, the overhead the yes uh drone? Yes, the drone. Oh my goodness, totally had a brain for it. Thank you. We were able to use drone footage to capture an overhead view, which is uh, unique to our program. So that's something we, we would not have been able to do in person. So I'm glad you really enjoyed that. Uh, so we have another question. Um, are there any plans for more prairie reconstructions closer to the city? that are on the Greenway property? Yeah, so there are Greenways you know, all around the region, including several in the more urbanized areas of the region. And um, there are you know, quite a few, uh, it could be kind of smaller scale pollinator gardens, you know, not the large restored um, prairie that you'll see along Blue or Meadow, but a number of um, the Greenways have native plants, whether it is um, you know, the, the planting beds along the McKinley Bridge that goes between Missouri and Illinois, or, um, you know, the plantings at the Mary Meacham Freedom Crossing, which is an underground railroad site along the Mississippi Greenway, or, you know, the, the rain gardens along the River to Pear Greenway. There's lots and lots of different um, native planting areas along the greenways in the urban areas, as well as the less developed. Because, I mean, each greenway is really unique in the region. They all uh, take on the characteristics of the communities they connect. Some connect to parks, neighborhoods, waterways, business areas. Um, so you know, the, the native um, plants connect, uh, reflect our um, you know, native heritage as well. And there's also the question about um, a, a plant list um, for the Osage people. I would say um, you know, check out the Osage Nation website and um, you know, there are, are People's contact information is listed on the website as well. Um, I would say, you know, the Osage people are um, the best source to talk to about that. 
for their plant list. Great, so we are gonna wrap up uh, now and I, I, I just have a few more questions I see about where to find the previous presentations and uh, they are again on our website at Missouri Humanities and we're gonna get that, um, excuse me, they're on our Facebook page. If you look at the videos, they are there saved for your viewing and we also have, we're gonna have them on our websites. So I would encourage you to stay tuned to our websites and sign up for our uh, emails, newsletters. That's a great way to stay connected. Also, I wanted to say that we're going to have a survey going out and this is a great way to stay connected. I'm going to put all the information that people asked about on that uh, survey letter. So if you could help us out by filling out a quick survey on what you want to see in terms of Native American Heritage Program um, and how you were impacted that really helps us to shape our audience in what we can give you in terms of our uh, what we deliver for you and i'm so glad you joined us today and elizabeth do you have anything else you'd like to add for great rivers no yeah. just thank you all for for coming together i know we really had to pivot this year we were hoping to you know share these experiences with you in person out on the greenways um but the you know the nice thing about videos is that they can be shared with a larger audience so you know, please feel free to to share this with other people who may want to go visit the greenways as melanie mentioned you know you can um View this video and previous videos on the Missouri Humanities Council what, uh, Facebook page. We'll also put um, these uh, docu-series episodes on the Great Rivers Greenway YouTube page. So, you know, please share the videos and also, um, you know, if you're able, go out and uh, explore and enjoy the greenways too. We've seen so many people, um, you know, increase in use this year as people are you know taking care of our, our physical health our mental health um, the greenways are, are great places to live life outside mm -hmm. thank you everyone and have a great day we'll see you later thank you